And they don't just do that here. In the very next chapter, in chapter 15, and I'm not going to write on them too long, I'm not going to bring them, down, bring them down too long, but in chapter 15, which we'll look at next week, which is the majority of the chapter is Moses praising the Lord. At the end of chapter 15, God brings them through, and they are over here now, and Moses praises the Lord. Right? And then Miriam also praises the Lord with the women. And they have this praise and celebration time. Okay? Okay? So that's chapter 15. And then we read in chapter, at the end of chapter 15. Okay? We're not even done the chapter. And this is what it says. In Exodus 15, 22 to 27. It says, Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. There three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. Then they came to, to Marah, and they could not drink its water because it was bitter. This is why the place is called Marah. Or Marah. Marah. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord answered him with a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became um, fit to drink. There the Lord issued a ruling and instructed instruction for them and put them to the test. He said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Now pay attention to this. They seem... So how, how, how many days later are they grumbling and complaining again? Three days. So, can, can, okay, so we look at them and go, wow, how? Now, three days, but is this cloud still leading them? So three days of cloud by day, three days of pillar of fire by night, after he lets them, saves them through this. And they're like, where's the water? What are we supposed to drink? What are you doing? Right? Not hearts of trust. L listen, listen to what it says. Um, this is not up there, so don't, don't try to... I just, it just comes to mind, though. It's at the end of 15. Uh, sorry, it's at the end of 14. 29 to 31, it says this. Listen to this. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in Him and in Moses His servant. Does that sound like that? Three days later? They're... So is this passage lying? Is, this, is the Bible wrong here? No. The Bible's right here. When they were right here, they saw the power of God and they put their trust in God. And in Moses, his servant. The one that God provided to lead them. And three days later, they're not doing it anymore. Three days later, they've forgotten just to put their trust in God. This chapter, the end of chapter 14 here, verses 29 to 31, are, are true. The Bible's not wrong here. They did. But three days later. That means, guys, when? That means by Wednesday and Thursday, even though we come to church on Sunday, we can already be down in God. And yes, we can have moments of experience in church where we're like, yes, I want to follow Jesus Christ. I need to be praying. I need to be reading. I want to be walking in fellowship with Him. I want Him to fill my life. And then Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday come along. And we're just into our own patterns of thinking, this is what I need to get done. This is what I need to do. And we're missing the ducks that Jesus is bringing into our lives. We're missing that there's colors that aren't right in our own walk, in our own life, maybe in our own words. There's an extra hand, and it's not the hand of God helping Maybe the hand of the devil kind of just kind of mixing things up a little bit and we're not paying attention to it. Or we're paying attention to those things, but then we're not actually paying attention to the things that we're supposed to be doing. Right? It's easy for us to be 
like the Egyptian, I mean, sorry, like the Hebrews. Let's not just condemn them. Literally three days later, they are complaining to Moses. They are complaining and grumbling because they do not trust fully that they are again calling and again pulling back their old ways of thinking and understanding and acting. Guys, I'm going to leave you with this thought. Uh, and it's this. The Word of God calls us, the Word of God calls us, 1 Corinthians 3, 1 and 3 says this, Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. It's hard by Wednesday to keep our minds focused on the fact that the pillar of fire by the pillar of cloud by day and fire by night, it doesn't lead us up there. But the spirit of the living God leads us in here. We might look at the Hebrews and go, why couldn't they get it? But guys, the, the, the presence of God was seen there. The presence of God now is seen in us. We have something more than they have. Okay? But yet we can so easily become blind. So we need to set our minds on things above. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good and perfect will. Patterns of this world. We are so ingrained in the patterns of this world. What this should do, what this should do, this should leave us walking in one humility before the Lord. If you recognize that you can literally be blind to some things and miss the things that God does not miss, then we need to walk in humility, no matter how long we've known the Lord. We need to walk in humility because we can miss things. Okay? And then we need to be engaged daily in seeking the Lord and setting our hearts on Him, setting our minds on Him. What is God doing in this moment? Not what I want, not what I want to see, but what is God doing in this moment? Let's pray. Lord God in heaven, we need you. All we need you. Because God, we realize that we are, we are blind to so much. And we can fall back into the old patterns where the old nature in some areas, in some areas, Lord, we are killing the old nature. And we are putting them on the cross and we are following you. But in other areas, Lord, we can, be, we can, we can become blind. Blind to see what is needed. Blind to seeing what's happening. God, I pray that we would not be like the Egyptians. And we can't blame them. They missed things. They were blind to things. And God, we are too. God, may we walk in humility. God, may we walk in each moment, just somehow bring it into thought, Lord. What, are you, what am I doing? Adam, pay attention to what I'm doing. Church, church, Christian, pay attention to what I am doing. I am doing things here. Your task is not as important as mine. God, our tasks are not as important as yours. Help us be aware. Help us be aware. Let our minds be trained on you. God, I pray by Wednesday this week, we would still be seeking you. We would still be humbly putting to death the old nature and seeking your will and your will. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray these things. Amen. And you are dismissed. Have a great week.